I appreciate you being here more than anything. I'm, I really want people to feel like there still is a community of musicians and people that love music. And I would love to be able to give you all a hug and a kiss and shake your hands and do all that stuff. Um, so this is going to have to take the place of that. And uh, the little sign that's hard to read behind me, uh, I'll say this again um, because I said it right before we started, but um, it's a uh, sign that was made by neighbors of Amy and I's in Tacoma Park, Maryland, right after 9-11, and it says, keep love alive. And that's more important than ever right now. I know everyone's a little bit scared, and, and uh, we just need to keep love alive and... and uh, even if it means talking through a, a video like this, you know, you can uh, nowadays with technology, you can you can talk to your relatives with their, their picture right there. Um, so anyway, I'm going to start right off with a with a nice relaxing tune called Spin Drift. If Greg will just quit making all that noise over there. I'm ready. <laughs> that was Greg. So nice to be able to play guitar like that in this kind of a setting where it's just quiet in here and you can hear the guitar ring out and uh, especially, the, you know, I decided there's so many guitars that Paul sells and I, and I do have a lot of guitars by the builders that he represents. 
But when I was going through them, trying to figure out which ones to bring, I just couldn't decide. So I decided to err on the side of caution. And I brought my two oldest guitars. Um, none of the people, uh, at least that I know of, none of these people that he has working to build guitars for him were alive when these two were built. Um, this one was built in 1926, and it's a, um, a Martin Triple O 18. Um, it's, it's one of my favorite current guitars, and I just it's just got a beautiful tone. And um, I got a message earlier from uh, Bill and Andy Smith that, that they said you make sure you bring one of the, bring the Martin, and I didn't know which one, so I brought them both. The other one I have on oh, I've got everything backwards. Okay, the one I have over here. <laughs> is a 1931 single 28 and uh, both of these guitars are ones that I play a lot at home when it's quiet and I'm downstairs and it's the same kind of environment um, I don't have the lights on and things like that but I do have the uh, the quiet so uh, Dale asked for this tune It's a very old one off of my uh, Waters in the Wild album, and I re-recorded it on an album I did recently called The Collector's Passion. Uh, it's called Chesapeake. And what's really cool, this is something that you will only hear in this concert, and if you're quiet, we're not using any effects or any kind of reverbs or anything like that. Everything you hear is what is coming from the guitars. And on this tune, I wrote a little thing at the beginning that allowed the guitar to ring and make it sound like a, a, a reverb. The box itself becomes a reverb unit. And if you're real quiet, you'll hear what I'm talking about. It's really beautiful. Um, not necessarily the piece, but the way the guitar reacts. <laughs> I hope the piece is beautiful. This is called Chesapeake. Thanks.
<laughs> That's a lot of fun to play. Um, we got a, had a chance to play that with Robin Bullock and uh, Sue Richards the other night, and it was just so much fun to to, ha to hear it with uh, him playing mandolin and her playing harp on that tune. That was really cool. So while I'm in this tuning and in this position, I'm going to do a couple of songs for Becky Flanagan and Paul Flanagan. Um, a lot of people, what was cool about this is I started getting emails early on of people asking for certain tunes. And periodically, as we go through this, I'll ask Greg if there's any particular nice things that people are saying <laughs> on the comments or if they have a request or if there's, you know. Um, what Paul said was, uh, let's see if you can see this. It's a free concert, but this is the uh, information. If you need to you really feel like you need to donate to me I wouldn't say no um, so this is uh, alpetaway at me.com and you can use PayPal that's the one I'm used to using but I did sign up for Venmo because people said that that's what they like to use so it's the same email address either way though so feel free to uh, to donate to the cause if you like um, I'm just happy that that we can get together like this um, one of the things, this next tune that, that Becky Flanagan asked for is one that uh, Ken Burns used in almost every film since he started using my music. And it's, uh, it's kind of an eerie, spooky kind of tune, and it's called Shadows on the Marsh. Becky, and while we're, um, hopefully Becky is watching and figured it out, um, we had to change the URL at the last second because of a um, technical glitch, and uh, Greg was able to figure out how to do another one quickly enough so that Sally could get you out of email with the new URL, but some of you may be joining us late because of that. This one um, for Becky also, um, mainly because I wrote it for her originally. It's called Rebecca's Waltz.
Uh, so much fun to hear these, these these guitars. This one is, um, like I said, it's a 1926 Martin. Um, it's made before the Depression when people were still kind of not scared. But um, this thing has survived 94 years, so we should be able to do the same thing, right? Or did I get that right? It's 94 or 96. Anyway, doesn't matter. <laughs> it's a long time. <laughs> reason I pointed that out is because the tuners on this are almost like banjo tuners for you guitar guys out there. It's really fascinating to, to have to tune like that last tune where the one string was a little flat and I was trying to get it up a little at a time. It's almost impossible to do it a little at a time because these tuners, the ratio is almost a direct, it's a six to one ratio as opposed to the new tuners which most of them are like 21 to one or, or at least 18 to one or something but that means that it takes um, six turns to get it all the way around as opposed to 20 turns. I mean, yeah, so it's, it's really amazing. I mean, I can just turn it a slight bit and it goes a whole step. Nice thing though is like a So this is another one that um, was requested. This, this came from Tony. Tony's a really good friend, and um, we've known each other for years now, and he's the one that produced the album, The Collector's Passion. And um, people were asking for all these older tunes, and, and luckily in this setting, it's, a, it's perfect for me to revisit those and play them because they're um, the ones. This is one that Amy and I are actually we're recording this one as a duet and the hardest part for me now is going back and forth because she is playing my part and I'm now playing a harmony on this so if I switch into a harmony accidentally for a second that's that's the reason but I'm, I'm gonna play this is called Seven Swans <laughs>
Here's one called River. It was written during a project I did about the waters around the Chesapeake Bay. Um, here's another one that was written during that. This is called Sifles Creek. And uh, it was named after a creek that used to run behind Larry Sifles house. And uh, he was a good friend to lots of us and we lost him quite a few years back now, but uh, his legacy lives on in, in just so many ways. I won't even start, but uh, um, this is going out to Larry wherever he is right now.
<laughs> yep. Oops, sorry about that. It's a little tight back here. Um, I have lots of guitars to show you. This one is my 1931 Martin 028. Um, I'm going to do a couple of ragtime sort of tunes on this one because it just always feels right when I play them on this tune, on this guitar. That guitar and this guitar are both, um, for the guitar people out there, are 1 and 7 eighths inch necks. So it takes a little bit of, just, of adjustment. But what's really interesting to me is I, as I grow older, I'm having arthritic fingers and they're going in all different directions. And so I've found that the wider fingerboard sometimes helps me nail the the actual note a little bit better because um, it's not as tight. I can just, I can miss by a little bit and still get the note. So that's kind of a neat thing. Um, another thing I want to mention about old guitars and new guitars is now that we're all sort of locked down and, you know, trying to do the best thing and stay away from other people um, and using hand sanitizer a lot, washing our hands Washing your hands has always been fantastic when you're a guitar player because you just don't want to have dirty hands on a guitar. But some finishes are kind of sensitive to that hand sanitizer, the alcohol stuff. So if you do use that and then play guitar, make sure that you let it dry completely. Just let it dry completely before you start playing your guitar. Most modern finishes aren't that you know polyurethane finish it won't matter too much and even lacquer isn't too sensitive but the guitar I just sat down has got a uh, French polish finish and that one um, is very sensitive to things like that so I mean uh, just something to keep in mind if you're a guitar player um, I'm gonna do uh, like I said a little ragtime tune this one um, I recently re not really re-released but got more stock <laughs> of an old album called It's Only the Blues. I mean, not It's Only the Blues, Shades of Blue. I have It's Only the Blues, too, but Shades of Blue. And we, we were able to get some of those at a good discounted rate, so we've been passing that on to other people. And uh, I, I think it's one of my better solo albums, and I really enjoy hearing it, but uh, we just didn't have it for years, and now we've got boxes of it. So if you're still a CD user and you're into it, you can go to our website at alandamy.com and just click on the uh, store link and you'll see all the different things including all the tunes that I just played you can download the tab for them you can download uh, we don't have downloads for the actually actual tunes yet you'd have to go s somewhere else for that but we're working on it now that we're all uh, having more time at home we're gonna be working on all these projects that we've been putting off and uh, so here's a tune um, from that album and it was written for a cat <laughs> called St. Clair, and this is called St. Clair's Rag.
I've written so many songs with those kind of changes that I get confused. And a lot of times when I'm here at Dream Guitars, demoing guitars of, of this kind, I'll start playing one and end up going through two or three different ones before I finish my little 50-second piece. And this one, I almost went into this other tune that is a more recent one, and I might as well go ahead and play it for you <laughs> since I have it on my mind. Um, this is the time of year around here in the mountains of western North Carolina when all the bears start coming out. So far, Amy hasn't seen them on her critter cams. She's got about, I think, 25 critter cams spread around our property now. And if you go to youtube.com slash fairviewcrittercams, I think that's the correct URL. If you go there, then you can see all these different videos. The one that she just sent out with our newsletter is one of my favorites. It's a uh, mama bear with her two cubs playing on a hammock. And they tore the hammock to bits, but they had so much fun that it was worth it. I mean, so much they gave us so much pleasure. And I think in times like these where we're feeling unsure and uncertain about the future, I feel, personally, I feel like a little walk in the woods will take care of it. Um, and I'm going to send this out to the mama bear. It's called Mama Bear Rag. Okay. Let's see if I can remember it. Mama Bear and the Cubs. I even wrote a tune called Baby Bear Rag, but I'm not going to keep doing all the bear rags. <laughs> I'm sure you guys are already getting tired of hearing guitar, but um, maybe not. I'm not. I'm really enjoying this. I'm really having fun playing my guitar in this nice environment and getting to hear all the notes is really great. Um, much better than being plugged in on stage, even though I really enjoy that too, but there's something special about playing on high quality microphones that you just can't get on stage. So 
I appreciate Greg Sipes setting me up here with these nice Neumanns and everything. Is that probably a Sennheiser up there, right? Is that, yeah, Sennheiser boom mic. Um, so what do I got here? Oh, I'll do, since I'm, I am doing rags, I'm going to do one more. <laughs> Just for the fun of it. Um, and I'm just going to keep playing until I, until um, my fingers fall off. How's that? It could happen anytime. So, um, so look at the sign behind me. Keep love alive. Keep music alive. Keep community alive. Keep everybody together. This is the way that we need to. It, this may be forever. I mean, who knows? Who knows how long it's going to take before we can actually interface with other people the way we're used to. And Greg and I were trying really hard not to touch the same things, but it, you know, here we are setting up mics and mixing board and everything, and there's just no way. So, Greg and I are going down together. If if one of us goes, we both go. But uh, and we both have people that are our partners named Amy, so it works out just fine. This is, so Amy might have to go too. I'm not trying to make light of it, I really am not. It's just that Greg and I are always joking and I can see him right over there. And he's, <laughs> when you should see what goes on here. But it's not that bad, really. We're both pretty nice guys. We don't say anything really bad. So this is uh, one I'm going to send out to my daughter, Sarah, and her son, Tony, and daughter, Kyla. And uh, I wrote this for Tony when he was about this big. I was babysitting for him, and uh, I was just playing guitar for him. I always do that with babies. I like to play guitar for them and see if they cringe or not. And if they don't, then it's, I figure it's a good tune. So I went and uh, saw Tony's high school graduation a few years ago, and he played this tune for me, and he knows how to play it. So that blew me away. And... Um, I just, I'm glad that he's home safe now um, from college and that Sarah was able to hook up with him. All the family is together, and I'm, I'm sending my love out to you guys. This is called Tony's Rag. That's the two old Martins for uh, Bill and Andy Smith. And what else do I have here today? I've got all kinds of different gear. Um, oh, Alex wanted to hear this song, so I'm going to go for it if I can reach that. I'm going to grab it. Excuse me one second. Oh. 
He wanted to hear a blues song. And so we'll do a little uh, Robert Johnson here. to the crossroads trying to flare me right So that Robert Johnson was the guy that started it all, started all the rock and roll. And uh, but in reality, there was someone before him that kind of inspired him, and that was a group called the Mississippi Sheiks. And they wrote this next tune in 1930. And um, Robert Johnson liked it so much that he turned it into one called "Come On in My Kitchen." At least that's the way I hear it. I'm, I'm always hearing things like that. Scott Ainsley's watching, so he'll probably correct me on that. But. Um, it's called Sitting on Top of the World. It was in the spring, one summer's day, that's when she left me, went away, now she's gone. And I don't worry Cause I'm sitting on top of the world I looked all summer And into the fall Looking for my little old Lenore But now she's gone And I don't worry Cause I'm sitting on top
Hampton Station Went out in the yard I just couldn't remember all the words, but that's one of those uh, those songs that that I've always enjoyed hearing, and I just decided this is the kind of thing I do at home sometimes when nobody's watching. I'll pick up a guitar like this that you've probably never seen me play before, and um, just mess around with the slide. And the other kind of thing, it's that's one thing when you think about it. This is a good time to do that, you know, if you're really if there are a few things like that you've always wanted to learn, like slide guitar, there are countless people online, like Scott Ainsley, for example, that could teach you online. There are a lot of people um, that are now turning to that. Musicians ha no longer have an income. There's nothing left. Um, Let me put this over here. Uh, and it's not just musicians, it's everybody. I mean, the you know, especially that whole industry, the entertainment industry, the theaters, the restaurants, the wait wait people, the servers that just had to go home and they have no income. And uh, so we're all doing this and I know everybody's got a, a, a thing online like this where they're, they're uh, playing little concerts. And I, this is in fact a free concert. I'm doing it because I wanted to bring that sense of community back together to everybody. But the thing that I want to be sure that you know, if you want to, you can donate and I really don't even care too much if you donate to me. <laughs> oh, Greg, my producer says, hold up the PayPal card. Okay, so let's see if I can get that on the camera. Okay, there you go. So right under the love, use PayPal or Venmo to send donations to alpetawayatme.com. Thanks so much. And if you wanna send them to some other musician, there are a lot of people coming up on this concert series. I, uh, I'll have to pull it up on my phone to see them probably, but um, go on that, that link that you got in your email and it'll show you all the people that are coming up. Um, Shane will be playing tomorrow night and I, um, in, a, in the trio Safardi, I think is coming up. Um, John Doyle, all, all those people Paul mentioned and it's a lot of people that are all over the world. There's one, um, Fabio, I can't remember his last name. He's in Milan. He hasn't been able to get out of his house for weeks. And uh, he's going to maybe do one of these concerts. So uh, keep your eyes peeled for these emails. If you get on that list, Sally will keep you up to date, as, as will Paul and people like Scott Bresnick, who's his, his internet guy up in New Jersey. And then Greg Sipes here might be even helping out now that he knows how to do it. Who knows? <laughs> I think they'd have to pay him more than I'm paying him, though. <laughs> That's the other thing. Sound guys. Sound guys are out of work. My, my son-in-law is a sound guy. The theater's closed. What are you going to do? Sit at home and make new music, I guess, and put it online and hope people give you a donation. So there you go. Anyway, I'm going to show you what else I do at home. I've been playing around with different kinds of instruments, um, you know, mandolins, banjos, and uh, this guitar. play a couple of tunes that I, I uh, wrote with this lap slide um, and I, I was lucky enough to be able to play this at the Swannanoa Gathering last year on stage this first tune and I would never played it in front of anyone before and uh, when I found out that my hands 
may get to the point where I can't use them, especially my left hand, I decided to learn how to use a slide bar on that last guitar and this one. And for any of you guys like me that are getting up close to 70 or above, if you, if you start having problems pushing down strings on the guitar and you just can't physically do it, in my case, I can't do bar chords anymore because all my fingers are bent like this, you know, so I can't do a lot of the tunes I recorded. So what's fun with this is you can play with different tunings and, and then by sliding, you get a really nice um, vocal kind of quality from one of these instruments. And uh, this one was made by a guy named Michael Hampel up in Oregon. I've just been playing around with the standard D tuning, but this is D A D E A D, so da dead. It's easy to remember. Let's see if it's it'll work. I don't have any titles for these tunes yet, so I'm I'm looking for suggestions. It's really fun to play. And I think that, you know, this is the kind of thing that, um, I mean, last, I guess it was a little over a year ago now, or maybe, maybe more than that, um, almost two years ago, when I first got one of these things, just trying to use this bar was impossible. And I found out, this is a trick if you're learning how to do this. If you do vibrato, vibrato from the bottom up instead of going above the note. So. sounds more in tune than if you go right on the note and vibrate up the way you do on a regular guitar. It sounds sharp that way. So you really come up from below it and it makes it feel like it's more in tune. And the vibrato saves you. It's sort of like singers that do that. <laughs> do a little bit of vibrato on either side of the note and you're hitting the note over and over in between those two vibratos. I think I'll 
leave that at that maybe. I, I, I have about a half dozen songs that I've recorded on this and uh, having so much fun. So maybe that's one of the projects I'll do. I'll release an album of just slide. Um, we'll see. We'll see. I wanted to uh, play just a few more. I, I know, it, you know, one of the things on these these kinds of events is that it's really easy to get bored and uh, you want to go out and find what the news is. I mean, um, it's whatever, uh, whatever thing. It's been, uh, we've been on here a little over an hour, so I'll try not to hold you too much longer. And I just want to say again, I really appreciate it. But I'm going to play a couple more tunes. Um, oh, I had a request for for these two. These are off that uh, Shades of Blue album. I think, well, I know Dale likes one of them. I'm not sure about the other one. So, yeah, this is good. Okay. So I'll do this one. Greg, is there any comments I need to know about? <laughs> Somebody suggested you call that tune something old, something new. Oh, yeah, something old, something new. Or, uh, one of my titles I thought for a, a great album was, uh, album title was Getting Old is Getting Old. <laughs> I've got a lot of them, actually. I've been keeping them, uh, writing them down, you know, because these things, you know, those kind of gems don't come to you every day, you know. This one, we were, uh, Amy and I were playing at a festival up in Jonesboro, Tennessee, and uh, we stayed at a place called the Eureka Hotel. This place was built in 1727. It's one of the oldest places in the, in the uh, east, or east of the Mississippi. Um, and I was sitting on the porch early in the morning before the festival got going, and this train, they're right near the train tracks, train went by, and I was just sitting there, and it, the, even the streets and the stores that are around it it just felt like I went back 150 years. It was unbelievable. It felt so much like an old cowboy town, um, just for that moment. And um, so I wrote this tune. It's more of a later, you know, later than the cowboy time, but uh, um, it's a sort of a ragtime thing, and it's called Eureka Hotel. <laughs> Here's the other one. This is called Alfonso Brown is back in town. These are both on Shades of Blue.
I hope I didn't blow out the microphones. Um, it's just a lot of fun to play that one there. I can get stuck sometimes on this. Over, I, you know, I never leave, so Amy sometimes has to kick me when that happens. Um, so I think I'm going to do, let's see, I'm going to do one more in case, and then, you know, if I get an encore, um, I'll come back and do another one. <laughs> we'll, we'll see if that they happens. They want you to keep going. They want me to keep going. Yeah, they really do. Okay, well, we'll see. Okay. Um, it's wonderful having you all here with me. This is really cool. I mean, I felt like I was actually going to a gig. I brought my vest with me. I brought my guitars and all my gear and set up. And we were half an hour before the thing, you know, still trying to figure out if it was going to work. And as far as I know, it's working. And I hope all of you people there, that, I mean, I was so honored that you would spend this evening with me. Um, and uh, I'm going to do this tune that is probably one I'm most well known or the tune that is most well known that I've written. And it was written for a, a movie called The National Parks, America's Greatest Idea. And it was produced by, well, Ken Burns and Dayton Duncan. Um, and um, I'm gonna play it for you here. Every once in a while that, that film series will come back around on uh, PBS. And if you haven't seen it, it's, it's amazing to see what what these national parks look like, what the story behind them was, different people who spent their whole lives going from one park to another. It's an amazing story. And the film work the um, is just, I, I'm a photographer myself, and to see what they did, I mean, it took them, I think, five or six years just to do all the filming. So it was an amazing thing. And... Um, watch it again. I have it on DVD. So this is called Sligo Creek. Thanks again for watching. Thanks so much. And um, like I said, if I get enough applause at the end, then I'll do another one. Okay. <laughs>
I can't hear it. There wasn't much applause. What, maybe they'll come back and applaud some more, you know? There's 420 people watching, by the way. 420 people watching? I think they could do better than that. Let me see. There we go. There we go. Now that's happened. Oh, thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. Thanks for spending time with me. And uh, make sure you support everybody else.